Hello, hello, what is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Fudge Muppet, and we've got something so exciting. Obviously everyone knows this, Fallout 76 has been announced, and there was a teaser trailer, and what we're doing today is analysing it. We've spent a bit of time going over it, looking at all the little bits and pieces, and I'm sure that as we have a few weeks to comb over this video incessantly, we will find even more, but here is what we found straight away. So, you know, before Bethesda was streaming on Twitch and they revealed the trailer just a few hours ago and we get hit with the please stand by sign and then the logo. Then we get an opening shot of the electrical equipment inside a Pip-Boy and then it zooms out a bit and then we actually see the full Pip-Boy. Now the main thing of note here is the year, much, much earlier than any of the other Fallout games. The date is the 27th of October, 2102. Now this is actually set only 25 years after the Great War, the day the bombs fell. So this is a bit of an interesting change up because I think Fallout 1 was only 60 something or something like that years after and then proceeded we have like Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 and such, which is like, you know, 200 years after the bombs felt. So this is a really, really close date. So initially, my first thoughts, the first things I've sort of got to talk about is that when we presumably venture out into the wasteland, it's going to be fresh apocalypse. Lots of radiation, lots of uh, very uninhabitable territory, but also not a lot of civilization. Like, it's not like the other games where they've had ages and ages to build up megatons and diamond cities. And you've got to consider things like this is there's also no Brotherhood of Steel necessarily because they haven't had really time to build themselves up and they don't even go to the East Coast for a long time, which we'll get to in just a second. I've got another point. I'm going to have tangent all over the place, but, and then the Enclave is also way over on the West Coast. And then also there's the fact that the super mutants aren't really around at this time and the ones that could be, or maybe are, are on the West Coast. Anyway, another important thing is the song. Um, the song is by John Denver originally, but that's just the original real life song. And that song's called Take Me Home Country Roads, and it constantly mentions West Virginia and mountainsides and stuff like that. And basically it gives me hella country vibes. And if you just go and Google search Virginia, you see all the farming country land all over Google images. And as we know, Virginia is closer to the East Coast, close to Washington DC. So it is going to be happening in a similar area to where Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 have happened, but it happened in the future. But of course this game is set way before, closer to the pre-war times. Now, some interesting things about this pre-war time setting is that some people have actually lived in the pre-war. For example, if there's a 50-year-old person in the vault, they would have lived 25 years of their life pre-war. And there very well could be people who actually survived the nuclear apocalypse still living from the pre-war and not being ghouls or anything. Like you could go out and you could find like a 50-year-old raider or something who was, you know, I don't know, once a baseball player in their high school team in the pre-war America. So this is all interesting. And another interesting thing about that date as well is that in that year, 2102, on the date June 23rd, Richard Moreau, also known as Richard Gray, or otherwise known as the Master, the main villain of Fallout 1 and creator of the Super Mutants, discovers their Mariposa based. But this is all happening on the West Coast. So, so I don't know how that's really going to mix in with Virginia on the East Coast. Like, I don't think Super Mutants could get all the way over to the East Coast by that time. And so I'm just not sure what the whole deal is going to be with Super Mutants. Maybe there's no Super Mutants. Maybe there's no Brotherhood of Steel, no Enclaves. So some of the traditional factions that we know and love from the Fallout franchise might not be appearing in this game. But anyway, another thing to note is this Pip-Boy looks a lot older, not one of the newer models. And as we get confirmed later on, it's basically a Pip-Boy 2000 or sort of a retconned looking version, which is the Pip-Boy that was used in Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. So there are party hats everywhere and there's a bit of a celebration theme throughout this vault because as the game keeps on panning through and we see multiple things. On the side here, we see the party hat and the red cup for like probably drinking. It's all like party kind of stuff. We, we see this thing going throughout the vault. We have an untouchables 
magazine and reading glasses. And then as we pan out a bit more, we get to see a bed and there's some miscellaneous kind of stuff underneath the bed, baseballs. Maybe this little thing could be a magnifying glass or compass kind of thing. But there are actually a few exploration themes here. Now, not the Jangles Monkey. Well, I guess that could actually be a exploration themed thing, like going off into the unknown, like going off into space. But let's not look at that. There is a fedora and there is a backpack. Now, the backpack might be a new kind of item that you can actually just wear on your um, character. But it's sort of giving me this theme of going out and adventuring into the, into the wasteland and reclaiming the land. This is a theme we'll talk about more and more as we see rest the rest of the stuff in the trailer, but below there are also binoculars underneath the bed. And just here, I'm not sure, but it kind of looks like a quiver maybe with like two arrows. Maybe there's bows and huntings. I don't know. I, I just saw that out the corner of my eye. So don't uh, take my word for that one, but it's there. So these themes are there. Now, there's also this rotating sign, which right now says good evening. And in the back, we can see silhouettes of this sort of barn. It looks like hills just here, but in the next little part, we can see it looks like a proper sort of silhouette of a barn or, or so I assume so, but we can see like the little crescent moon and we can see like a black cat and, a, and an owl. It's sort of the night creatures of the, of the barnyard. I, I just get this real countryside farm feel to a lot of the terrain. And it's probably where Vault 76 is at. And you've also got the camping and the ro toasted marshmallow. And it, it, it just, you can really feel the vibes there. And then when you get to the next part and it does the little, little rotating thing on the sign, you've got a bunny and you've got the cartoon rooster and the cartoon sun and the silhouette of the barn with all the trees in the background, fresh cup of coffee, the daisies. It's, it's got that strong countryside feel. The only other thing I guess I could see is that there's these golf clubs in here. Uh, I don't know, that's not that significant, but I don't know, maybe some nice open uh, grassy ranges in Virginia to play golf. But anyway, we get onto the next scene and we see what looks like the Unstoppables board game. I also just realized I said Untouchables before, I think, for the magazine. I meant Unstoppables. But anyways, this board game's just sitting out. And then you've also got what looks like a oak something lager from what I can see. So probably just a new kind of drink, maybe Virginia specific. I'm not an expert on lagers from Virginia, but uh, that is there. There is also an acoustic guitar in the background. It's more of those country vibes. So I feel like this could be the theme to the game, which I think is pretty cool. And as we pan further up, there's some books in the bookcase, jack-o'-lanterns because it is close to the Halloween. We've also got a deer skull mounted on the wall, another sort of outback country kind of vibe item. You have a bird cage and you have this sort of mascot squirrel head, some other board games like Blast Radius, stuff we've seen before, but more importantly, we have got this poster on the wall, which says 1776 to 2076, Vault Tech salutes America, introducing Vault 76, the official vault of the Tricentennial. Now, Tricentennial, 300 years, 1776, founding of the nation America, all the way to 2076, they make a new vault, Vault 76. I think that's basically the setup for Vault 76. So it might be a special sort of celebration vault. And with some information that we will talk about later, some references to Vault 76 in Fallout 3, we can understand why there might be sort of like a patriotic kind of pride. In fact, in Fallout 4, at the start in the prologue, the newscaster can be heard saying, since debuting Vault 76 last year, in, in honor of America's tercentenary, Vault Tech continues to expand with plans for well over 100 vaults around the country. Now, this, of course, was said by the newscaster in the prologue of Fallout 4, which was October 27th, 2077, the days the bomb fell. So the next scene, we've got some Vault Tech kind of guy over here. We've got the Cappy, I forgot their names, the mascots from Nuka World. We've got some military vehicle toys over on the side. There's an iBot there. But the main important thing to take away from here is what's on the TV. And what we do see is the opening of the Vault 76, supposedly. And I'm, I don't know why they're playing this on the TV again in the Vault. Maybe, maybe they're just watching it for a bit of that uh, pre-war nostalgia. But essentially, the guy on the TV TV is saying, when the fighting has stopped and the fallout has settled, you must rebuild. Settlement feature, anyone? I can guarantee there is going to be settlement building and there could be a bit of farm building or something, a bit of 
country stuff. I've got more to talk about, but I sort of want to go through more of the trailer before I sum up my final thoughts. But anyway, I have a feeling like, you know, the settlement building's probably going to return. Anyway, there's also this wooden pail here and two magazines that have got like Scout's Life on them. It's just more nature countryside kind of themes. Now, next up, we get shown a shot of a rewards cabinet and some of which we've been able to read. I wasn't quite able to figure out what the golden toilet was about, but basically there is a golden shield on the bottom left that says best looking man. There is a plaque on the bottom right that says performance award vault tech monitor which sort of implies a bit of a uh, prestigious kind of character or like a authority figure or someone is doing well in the vault like i don't know if this is about your player character we're not quite sure but there is also outstanding achievement award which has a very interesting quote in appreciation for your commitment and dedication to our isolation program sacrificing many so some can live it's just a very uh Sort of quite confronting Plark message. But then we also have a, a Excellence in Bravery Award, which I can't quite figure out what it says below. I can figure out the start letters to some, but if someone in the comments below can help us all out, that would be really, really appreciated. And then up above, finally, when we pan to the top, we get to see a trophy award saying annual vault Halloween costume contest first place. And then there is a storage room in the background, but I don't think there is too much else to see here. I hope I'm not missing much, but if I do miss anything, guys, please do tell me in the comments below. Next, we are hit with a laundry scene and there's not a whole lot to talk about here there's the head of a toy horse over in the corner there toy horse you've seen we've seen a braxo baseballs clipboards same old standard stuff there is this new like little cat toy thing with big teeth but besides that nothing that interesting there is a vault tech procedures poster on the background but it does look like it's not really giving away anything about the game it's sort of just says some standard kind of vault stuff, half of which you can't read about, you know, authorities and applications and stuff like that. There's first aid kit in the bathroom in this next scene. There's this another little chick looking furniture piece, which I guess is another country theme. Lots of country theme. And I mean, it's the music helping you along as well. But uh, it's the next scene. We have some more interesting stuff. I just want to point out before I talk about the terminal, there is another little owl figure like they're they're just pumping this full of this i just get this country barn idea in my head like i don't know whether it i don't live in virginia so i have no idea but like just from the google images and if you can type in west virginia farm you can get that kind of vibe that classic red barn you know with a silo and i don't know an owl hooting all night up on the roof but then we get this vault tech message on the terminal says you are invited and this you are invited thing is to what i presume is the party which we do see in the next scenes and we'll get to that when we we see it but i'm assuming this is your vault tech room and you get invited to the party but i'm assuming everyone gets invited to this party but we'll talk about that in a second now on the shelf above there's like a little clown thing but besides that nuka cola trucks and books Nothing too important what I can see in this scene. Um, next, we do have what looks like a sort of kitchen. It almost has a bit of a diner feel, I guess, like by the side of the window. It's got, uh, I hate to keep bringing it up, but that sort of classic country farm kind of vibe. You've got like just the coffee in the tin and you've got that red checkered oven mitt and you've got just like a nice spread out on the table and the sugar bomb cereal and I don't know, it, 50s country, I guess. But out the window, we've got a celebration, balloons and bits and pieces going on. And when we actually get revealed to the next scene, we do see like the main, uh, I guess, what do you call it? Atrium or hall of the vault. Now, this is where there's a lot of interesting things to take away. There is a sports field down below. And I mean, it's all covered in confetti. There's obviously a celebration been going on. I mean, you can see a jukebox over on the right. There's all kinds of stuff, but let's, let's look at the biggest thing in the room, which is the sign that says celebrate reclamation day. Now we heard on the TV before that it's like, oh, you know, we've got to rebuild America after the fallout and get out there. And now it's been 25 years. Presumably this is what we were invited to on the terminal or our, our character was. 
But anyway, we've come and there's this sort of celebration. And if you actually notice on the right, there is a welcome mat. Now, this welcome mat could presumably be to the main vault entrance with a big vault door. So it's welcome to the new world where everyone's going out to reclaim America. And besides that, there's some more country themes in there. Like if you look over, there's like a dining hall over here and you can see this painting and the painting's like a, that kind of classic fruit bowl. I don't know, I get these real harvest farm feels to all of this. But yeah, so I've got some kind of things to tie together. In Fallout 3, there is a vault tech terminal in the Citadel, which lists Vault 76 as a control vault, implying that there are no experiments being held here. And there were simply 500 occupants and that the duration was for 240 months. So that this vault was presumably supposed to open 20 years after nuclear war, which is 2077. However, this date happens 25 years after. So whether, you know, they keep it closed for five more years or they came out of the vault five years ago. However, I feel like the setup of the game, it's going to be a brand new recent thing just because I'm assuming it will start off, you know, just before maybe you grow up in the vault, a few scenes like that. But I have a feeling that it's going to be like reclamation day is and then you all go out and it's kind of going to reveal stuff from there. But so what I think this all tells me and the premise of this game really well could be is venturing out into, into a new post-apocalyptic world, which is really fresh. It's been hit with bombs very recently. And contrasting to other games like Fallout 3, where you like quickly run out of the vault to get away and look for your dad, you're the lone wanderer, or you're the sole survivor in Fallout 4, uh, the only one who survived the fucked up cryo experiment. In this, it seems like you're going to be coming out of the vault, presumably with 500 occupants, like it says in the the Citadel Terminal in Fallout 3, but you're going to be coming out with a whole bunch of characters who are from the vault along with you. And maybe this comes out into the settlement building kind of stuff, or maybe some big disaster happens, or maybe you're in control of trying to manage all of the vault characters. Maybe it's a bit of a mix of a, not a Fallout Shelter vibe, obviously not in gameplay, but you're, you're coming out and you, you, it's got like a very settlement focused, like imagine the settlement building of Fallout 4, but far more enhanced and far more intuitive and you've got more leadership roles. There are also people talking about how this might not be a single player game, not necessarily an MMO. I think it's Jason Schreier or something and I've heard it through the grapevine and, and ages ago there were things about Bethesda hiring people with experiences in creating multiplayer games, but this would actually be a perfect setup for a co-op Fallout game. An RPG, I'm assuming, or at least I'm hoping, but I don't think they would deviate from that. But imagine a co-op RPG where you can, maybe you can play with another one of your friends or maybe up to four or something, but this is the kind of setup where it would allow for that. But for example, because you aren't a single soul survivor and the story's revolving around you being a singular person, there could be theoretically just multiple people from the vault who are going off on an adventure like building bases I don't know maybe you could end up becoming a raider gang or attacking other groups or finding resources or farming or being the good guy but essentially what I'm saying is this story setup actually allows for a co-op for example in Fallout 3 you can't exactly play co-op because you're the singular guy you're the singular lone wanderer looking for your dad but I I don't know that's just an idea and it's based off a lot of rumors and he said she said but uh it is possible with from what with from what we've seen in this trailer so far and a potential setup for the game but i do feel like settlement building and sort of base building and exploration will be a part of this game but i also wonder if there will be more intense settlement features like like specific settlement management and like allocating roles to other characters and like and like farming and, and, and gathering resources. Maybe there's even stuff like mining. I, I don't know, but it is interesting to think about. And now we do finally get to the scene of the character, presumably the player character. We don't get to see his head, but it is a sort of old timey vibe vault suit. It doesn't look as high tech and sleek and clean and and high tech as the cryo vault suit in vault 111 and fallout 4 this one looks the blue looks just a little bit cheaper and there's this sort of like uh shiny gold colored it, it's kind of 
It looks like it could be made by someone's mum. It doesn't look like anything impressive. Also, we get confirmation of the Pip-Boy 2000. We can see it down there. And also, he's setting up his Pip-Boy with the same date, October 27th, 2102. And then we get to see his back, and it's uh, Vault 76. That's all pretty straightforward. He is a vault dweller of Vault 76. And then a quote comes on, Vault 76, our future begins, which... Once again, implies going out into the post-apocalyptic land, trying to start a new civilization almost with the members of Vault 76. Now, the country music here changes as the Vault 76 eerie sort of vault opening sound comes on. And, and maybe this will be a really scary experience from the character's point of view, because remember, this is going to be a wasteland like we've never seen before. Heavily irradiated, very recently destroyed and fucked up. Like, there could be raiders out there and people who have been seen some fucked up shit. They've seen their cities being nuked, and then they've gone crazy, and they've raped and attacked and pillaged and murdered. And then you can sort of see some really psychologically damaged characters, like some 50-year-old raiders and... I think like raider gangs and small settlements would have started to form, but um, I don't think there's going to be any Brotherhood of Steel or Enclave or Super Mutants, and I wonder what creatures and stuff we could see. We probably going to do another video on um, some stuff we could see in Virginia, a better analysis of Virginia and a potential sort of like a ideal Fallout Virginia kind of video, like we've done for ideal new orleans we did for fallout 4 and um stuff like that basically just a whole lot of guessing of features that we could see but uh yeah overall i, I think that's pretty much it i don't think i've really missed too much do anyone feel free to add way more in the comments if you notice any more little details and speculation i mean i'm really excited this e3 i would not have expected a new fallout game there was all these there's all these things about starfield and new ips but Whew, man, this has been exciting. So, anyways, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this analysis. You can follow us on social media, on Twitter especially. That's where we always are very, very active, and we are very excited for all to come from Bethesda this year. Whew, man, I hope you're G'd too. All right, thank you very much for listening and watching this video. Like it, subscribe for way more content. This is going to be an exciting year of content ahead. Thanks very much. I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.